Welcome to Mars or Bust. I'm Spaceman Dave. And welcome to Episode 7, Terraforming. Can we fix Mars? Please hit like and subscribe. It lets myself and YouTube know you're enjoying these videos. Mars, a desolate place. But what if we could change all that? Make it more like Earth. Be able to walk outside and breathe the air. Be able to build a life. Raise a family on another world. What would it be like? Okay, enough of that. I'm getting all teary-eyed here. Mars is actually half the diameter of Earth. And the Moon is one-third the size of Mars. You could actually fit six planets the size of Mars inside the Earth. As Mars is smaller, that means its mass is less. Due to this, the gravity on Mars is 62% less than that on Earth. Being this is due to the size of the planet, there's really nothing we can do to change this. It's just something we're going to have to live with. Another problem is that Mars only has 1% the surface pressure of Earth. Where the atmospheric pressure on Earth is 1,000 millibars, on Mars it's less than 10. The other problem is the atmospheric composition of Mars and Mars is 96% carbon dioxide, less than 2% of nitrogen and argon and other gases. And where the Earth has 21 to 23% oxygen, Mars has less than 18 tenths of 1%. This is deadly to the human body in these quantities. We also have an issue with surface temperature. Well, Earth has an average of 15 degrees Celsius, or 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Mars is a balmy minus 60 degrees Celsius, or minus 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Definitely not your tropical getaway. Okay, now that we know what the problems are, what can we do to fix Mars? We know we can't change the mass of the planet, so the gravity is going to have to stay the same. We're just stuck with a permanent weight loss plan. Hey honey, you know how that weight loss program you're on hasn't been working? Uh, never mind. Elon Musk wants to nuke the poles of Mars, it was basically to vaporize the ice caps. By doing this, you'd be releasing both water vapor and carbon dioxide. Both of these are greenhouse gases, theoretically substantially warming the planet's surface. Scientists feel that nuking the planet would do more damage than good. Sort of like telling your wife she needs a different weight loss program. Even if we could produce enough greenhouse gases to warm the planet, there's another problem. Currently, Mars' magnetic field is virtually non-existent. Due to this, any gases that form in the upper atmosphere of Mars are stripped away little by little by the solar winds. A planetary scientist named Jim Green has proposed a plan to launch a magnetic shield that would go in a stationary orbit above Mars with a large dipole that would produce a magnetic field strong enough to produce an artificial magnetosphere. This would protect Mars from the solar winds and stop the stripping of the upper atmosphere. Once this is done, we can get back to the task of trying to put an atmosphere back on Mars. 
This could possibly be done by launching large mirrors in orbit around Mars and reflect the sun down to the poles to melt the ice caps. Melting the poles is a good idea, but that's not going to produce anywhere near enough greenhouse gases to warm the planet. So we need something else in addition. The one thing the human race is good at is global warming or producing greenhouse gases. All that would have to be done is do the same thing on Mars as what we do here on Earth. What we would have to do is build factories on Mars that would produce greenhouse gases. And over the period of many years of pumping these gases out, Mars would eventually become stable. One of the next things we'll need is oxygen. There's a process called MOXIE. MOXIE collects CO2 from the Martian atmosphere, then electrochemically splits the carbon dioxide atoms into oxygen and carbon monoxide. Then you just release those into the air. Or the carbon monoxide can be burned for fuel. Another process is to take the water that's found on Mars. Through electrolysis, it's split into both hydrogen and oxygen, where the oxygen can be released into the air and the hydrogen can also be used as fuel. The way it sits right now, neither one of these processes can produce enough oxygen to make it worthwhile. Also, not any one of these processes can be done by itself. They all have to be done together and in sequence to accomplish the goal. All these things will help Mars help itself. Over time, Mars will perpetuate this change. As the planet warms, it'll release more CO2 from the ground and warm the planet even more. It just needs a jump start. Not only that, but technology has got to advance quite a bit before we can even consider doing this. And I'd like to thank all my wonderful patrons for helping me make this happen. And a very special thank you to my new patron, Robert and Ann Wells. Thank you so very much. Without all you, I wouldn't be doing this. Okay, now I need a little help from all of you. The other night, Elon Musk unveiled his Cybertruck. I'm not sure what I think of it. After looking at it for a while, I think it's pretty cool. But here's the situation. I show it to the wife and she says, there's no way you're gonna get that. So in short, I'm kind of torn between liking it and maybe not liking it, if you know what I mean. Give me your opinions in the comments below. Would you buy the truck given the opportunity? Just a simple yes or no will suffice, and we'll see how this plays out. I think it really looks like it belongs here, but who knows? This is the way Elon does things. I actually think it's going to catch on.